Hey, welcome back everyone. So in this video, I wanted to talk to you about my career in IT from starting up in help desk to becoming a cloud engineer. So let's go. All right, let's start with my education because it's always an important topic. So I studied physics. Yes, it is completely unrelated to IT. But if you get into the field of IT, you'll learn that most people don't have a degree in IT. So I got into IT with a degree in physics. It was absolutely not my plan to go into IT. I wanted to go into software development or something related to physics. And I had no intention whatsoever to end up in IT. As a matter of fact, when I got the job, I was like, this is going to be a one year type of thing. And now 10 years down the line, I am still working in IT. The way I got my job was because I needed one. I applied to many jobs for machine learning and things like that, that I was interested in. And none of them responded to me or they actually responded saying they didn't want me. So I got into IT and I got into help desk. I got into help desk because at my previous job, I used to maintain the computer lab. And so I gained a lot of experience unknowingly in IT, but working in IT in help desk was very similar to what I did. So basically what I would do is I would either enter the phone or answer tickets and I would go and help the users either remotely or physically in person. So installing software, backing up data, uh, fixing computers, not working, it's just a basic help desk type of thing. I do have to say that help desk was actually one of my favorite jobs in IT. I really enjoyed working with people and meeting so many different people. I actually befriended the neuroscience department where at the university where I used to work in the help desk and I made some very good friends there and it was very exciting. I know a lot of people who follow this channel may not want to get into help desk and want to go straight into uh, engineering and DevOps and cloud but I just have to say it. If I had to give anybody a way of getting to cloud engineer, I would absolutely start these people into help desk because it provided me with valuable skills that really no other jobs actually prepare you for managing expectations of a client, how to deal with people who are not happy. Like their computer is not working. They are losing money. They're losing time. How do you handle these people who are upset at something and take it out on you? There's just so many things that help desk teaches you that you will not learn in any other job. So I started as a technician, then I got promoted within a year at the senior technician. I did basically the same thing, but I dealt with more complicated problems and more complicated users. And that was fun. Uh, that was very interesting to deal with <laughs> those problems, uh, big problems in certain cases, like updating all the Windows XP to Windows 7. When you're talking about 800 computers, that's a much different task. In all honesty, a lot of the skills I had learned in help desk how to make an image, how to deploy software and things like that, I still use in the cloud. I learned PowerShell as a senior technician. And this is a skill that I have used every day ever since. There's very few days where I don't actually write a line of PowerShell at the very least at work. So I learned some very invaluable skills and I, I would not change that. Then I went to some sort of desktop engineering role. It was senior technical analyst, but it was basically um, desktop engineering. In that role, what I did is I supported a uh, help desk role. So I created operating system images. I created software packages. I created scripts to fix certain recurring problems so that it makes it easier for help desk to solve things. I wrote a lot of knowledge articles in our knowledge base to help help desk uh, solving problems. We also managed a lot of the big projects that help desk had to handle. So the project that I did with windows XP to seven, we did the same thing from windows seven to 10. That was such a great project. Uh, and, um, again, that was, that was a fun project, especially when you don't actually have to 
go and do the work physically yourself, <laughs> especially on a big campus like this university. That was a lot of walking. So it was exciting. We also managed computer labs at the university. So that was about 300 computers. We did some crazy automation stuff that was, um, that, that actually was pretty neat um, to, to image computers. We could just re-image them like super quickly. And um, yeah, that was, that was fun. And in that job, I also got into data analytics. I mean, I knew this from physics, but in terms of professional level, doing data analytics and uh, reporting on certain uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, you know, automating all that so that we can have a big report showing us where we were doing good, where we needed to improve. That was quite uh, an interesting and challenging thing to do. This is again, skills that I use every day. I report on certain KPIs such as uh, uptime, uh, cost. I, we didn't have cost, but now as a cloud engineer, I didn't have to report on cost, make sure we keep those down and things like that. So I learned those skills in that desktop engineering role. Then I moved to my current employer and I started at that employer with, again, a desktop engineering role, doing the same type of things that I did in my previous role at the university. Because of the skills I have, the PowerShell skills, are very well suited for cloud work. And so I started working on cloud projects and I showed interest in cloud projects, even though the company wasn't really cloud centric at the time. So I started working a little bit on Azure stuff, you know, just very, very tiny stuff, like pay with the free credits. We had like a, a little bit of um, cloud deployment for one of our stores and all that. So I was involved in this and because I showed interest and because I had the skills to really work at scale, the programming and scripting skills is really something that everybody who wants to be a cloud engineer should focus on because being able to work at scale, being able to work quickly, like it's highly, highly valued in the cloud. It always makes me think of those movies where they're like, we have this very precise thing. So when I say go, you press this button. And um, it's always like, oh, how is that precise? Like when I say go press this button, um, w when you're a cloud engineer, you write a script. And when one thing is done, the next thing starts like within milliseconds, like much faster than a human can do. And so. Uh, a very funny uh, thing, that, that whole movie thing. Uh, but I guess there wouldn't be as much drama if somebody was like, I wrote a script, <laughs> it does the thing. Then a year-ish after uh, starting at an employer, I was promoted to cloud and data engineer. And my role now, this is my current role as of filming this video, um, is to really handle the moving into the cloud for this company, for at least the North America region. As more things progress, we are looking into things like infrastructure as code, like how you onboard existing uh, subscriptions to an infrastructure as code and a DevOps type of workflow. How do you optimize uh, virtual machines if we have to move them to the cloud? How do we do virtual desktops in the cloud so we don't have to have an on-premise uh, virtual desktop infrastructure, especially with VDI, the ability to turn off the computers and not pay for them if nobody uses them. In theory, this should be a much more affordable option as the company scales the need for virtual desktop. So how did I actually learn all the cloud stuff? Well, it came from a few things. The first one is me playing around. I was writing software in AWS actually deployed a lot of software in AWS, uh, EC2, Elastic Beanstalk. I did use MongoDB, the, the Atlas, MongoDB Atlas. So I wrote software for the cloud and I was familiar with CI CD pipelines and I was familiar with uh, cloud. Another thing I did is I actually took classes. My employer paid for me to uh, learn more about the cloud. We learned the uh, Azure uh, fundamentals class for the certification is the 900. I did not take that exam because I didn't need to and I was lazy and I don't like taking exams. And 
I learned AZ-104 and I passed and you can see in the description below the um, video about that. I also passed the AZ-204 and you can see again the, the video in the description down below about my experience with that, how I learned and all that stuff. Then there's also the reading the documentation. It's as simple as that. Can you read the documentation to solve a problem? Can you keep on top of things? My role now, a lot of it consists of those new projects that I mentioned before and to keep up on top of things that are currently there. So I spend a lot of my mornings just looking at our KPIs, making sure that people aren't downloading too much data, people aren't uploading too much data, that we're keeping up with the data that people are handling, making sure our costs are not surprising and all that stuff. So if you want to get a job in the cloud and you want to know what do you need to learn to get those jobs, I invite you to look at this video right here about what you need to learn for certain jobs in the cloud, cloud engineer, DevOps, developer, administrator, and architect. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.